test. All right, quick audio test here to make sure that everything is coming through okay. And then we will get this puppy rolling. All right, quick audio test here. Okay, we are solid. What is going on? Welcome to another TubeBuddy live stream. My name is Nick Nimmin. I help YouTubers grow their channels, make videos, and all types of other YouTube related stuff. And today I'm going to help you grow on YouTube by tweaking your channel a little bit. You know, it's it's a little bit, uh, you know, unconventional, so to speak, as far as, you know, the typical advice that you get. But today we're talking about basically optimizing your channel to improve your chances of growth, basically to make it easy for people to subscribe to your channel and to make it very easy for you to get more views on your channel, which equal more watch time, which ultimately equals more channel authority, which ultimately equals more subscribers, more views, and you know, kind of a snowball. So that's what we're gonna be going through today. So right now, um, I'm gonna wait just a couple of minutes here before we actually get into the juice of this because you know I wanna give people a chance to get in here. Right now we've got, uh, looks like 57 people watching, so make sure that you give this video a thumbs up while we are getting started. Um, I'm going to give some shout outs and I wanna say thank you to Andrew and Phil for having me on today. I appreciate it, guys. And if you are not already subscribed, to the TubeBuddy channel. If you are have just caught this in a browse feature or something like that, make sure that you go ahead and hit the subscribe button right now. And if you don't have TubeBuddy installed yet, make sure that you go to TubeBuddy.com slash install, and there'll be a link in the description as well, and you install that now, because some of the things that I'm gonna be talking about today, um, having TubeBuddy is going to be a huge benefit and make it a lot easier, because there's long ways to do it, and then there's the easy TubeBuddy, TubeBuddy way to do it. So make sure that uh, that you go ahead and install TubeBuddy if you have not got that installed already. I see Gord Eisman in the house, Daniel Branch. What is going on? Nice to see some familiar faces in here. Nice to see you guys. Bills FC, what is going on? Nice to see you in here as well. I hope everybody is having an awesome, awesome day today. Yeah, we got people checking in from the Philippines. Real quick, uh, while people are, you know, get, coming in here, go ahead and let's do a roll call. Go ahead and drop in the comments and let me know where it is that you are coming from. I'll go first. I am broadcasting right now from Thailand, and I know that a lot of you, a lot of you, are on the other side of the planet. So uh, just go ahead and chime in right now, and uh, you know, let's do a roll call and see where you guys are coming in from. Ooh, from Jordan. That's a nice one. We got the United States in the house. We've got Jordan. We've got Costa Rica in the house. Chicago. Nice. The Netherlands. All right. UK. Florida. We are global. All right. We got Social Blue Book in the house. Nice to see you in here. London, UK. Awesome. This is fantastic. All right. So we are going all over the world. Woo. Got to love the internet for that and YouTube especially, right? So the first thing that we are going to talk about, we're going to go ahead and just get right into it right now. And the first thing that we are going to go over are some things that you can do to your channel to help you make it easy for people to subscribe to your channel. Just a few channel tweaks that you can do to, you know, just make it easy because the easier it is for people to subscribe to your channel, the easier or the more that people are going to subscribe to your channel because you're going to take the thought side out of it and make it kind of like something that they can do kind of like in passing if they're into your content. So... The very first thing that you are going to need in order to follow along here is you are going to need to go inside of your TubeBuddy account. You don't have to actually go inside of your TubeBuddy account right now, but feel free if you want to follow along while you're watching this video. I'm going to go a little I'm going to go kind of slow for those of you that want to do this, but if you want to go ahead and sign into your YouTube admin and go ahead and sign into your TubeBuddy account, then you can actually follow along and do these tweaks. So you can take that action right now to get some of this stuff done. So the very first thing that you want to do, India, nice. Jordan again, Ukraine, 
this is fantastic. So the very first thing that you want to do is you want to log into your TubeBuddy account. And on the very top arrow here that you're seeing on your screen, you'll see promo materials. You want to make sure that you go into your promo materials. And then down on the bottom arrow, you want to make sure that you copy out the channel page with subscription pop-up link. So real quick, let me know if any of you are following along with this or are you just watching? Are you going to try to make these changes to your channel right now? Or are you just following along to, you know, to kind of see the changes that you can make? Or are you, are you making those changes right now? Let us know in the comments. So it looks like there's a report that the stream is hanging or that it did hang. Not sure what is going on. So it looks like, uh, yeah, it looks like we're okay. No problem at all here. So if you are following along, following, moderating, and watching, says Andrew. Nice. Yeah, uh, Kim, uh, Kim Booning, uh, basically you want to log into your TubeBuddy account. You want to go to TubeBuddy.com. You want to log into your account. Once you log into your account, you're going to look for the option that says promo materials. It's going to be right there on the left-hand side when you log into your TubeBuddy account. So you're probably gonna have to actually click on you know, one of the icons, the little speaker uh, megaphone looking icon inside of your TubeBuddy account. And then it looks just like the little icon here where next to the word promo materials. And then you want to uh, uh, click on this little side link. Yeah, he actually just dropped a link right here to the promo materials. Thank you, Andrew, for that. But once you have that, what you want to do, and this makes it extremely easy, and this is in addition to the subscribe button on your channel page, right? Basically, instead of just having the subscribe button on there, you also put the additional call to action, the click to subscribe on there so that you are actually telling them to subscribe as well. And in order to do this, all you need to do is you go up into your channel header or to your about page and you hover over your custom links down on the bottom, or you cover over, you hover over your channel art in the top right of your channel, and you're going to see a little pencil icon popped up. Here, I'll actually show you right here on my screen. Give me one second. So basically, once you are on... Let me flip to my display here one second. Okay, in order to find this, basically you go up to your channel header right here and you click on this little pencil icon. Another place that you can do it is you can go to your about page and if you scroll down, then you just hover over this little pencil icon right there and that will give you the option to add these links that I'm getting ready to show you. So once you are in the mod area that I just highlighted, what you wanna do is you want to add that link from inside of TubeBuddy to your channel header links. And what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that your click to subscribe call to action and that link is at the very top of this list so that it actually shows that text. Because if you don't have this at the top of your list, then it's not going to show that text. It's not going to show that click to subscribe text. So you wanna make sure that you have that at the top of your list. Now, for those of you that are following along with this, I will give you just a second to go ahead and implement that, just in case there's anything that you have to you know, figure it out or anything like that. But basically, that is the very first thing that you, that you can do, is you wanna add that to your channel header just to make you know, that stronger call to action, actually telling them to subscribe, and uh, just to make one more place that they can actually click on that button. More importantly, is the one that's coming up right here in a second. You want to use that same exact link and you want to go into, you can actually add this to your upload defaults inside of your, um, your admin panel inside of YouTube. And yeah, they, uh, one of you were asking about if that is one of the free tools inside of TubeBuddy. 
Yes, it is. Promo materials, um, and this is confirmed by Andrew, uh, promo materials is free for all users inside, regardless of, you know, which which package that you have inside of TubeBuddy. Intrepid Dawn, nice to see you. Kill Creations, what is going on? Nice to see you. So the next thing on the list here is actually adding this to your description. You will be blown away over time the amount of people that actually subscribed through this link in your description. Of course, you know, they can do it uh, underneath your name as well. They can click on that. But for the people that are reading your description, you want to make sure that you put the reason they should subscribe. On my example here, you see that I have subscribed for more free YouTube tips, right? Because I'm telling them, I'm giving them the value of why they should subscribe. I'm telling them why it is that they need to subscribe to my channel, the type of content that they can provide, just in case that's the very first video of mine that they have ran across. So you want to add this to your description. Of course, you want to put your main description information above this, but you want to add that same thing to your description. And this is mainly, like this 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 addition here, this is mainly for the people that are going to go to your video, they're going to watch your video, maybe you're going to reference something down in your description, or maybe they are just going to look in your description to see other places to follow you, or just to see what else is going on with the video, to see the written versions of what it is that you are talking about in your video. So when you have this link down there, it's just one more reminder, just in case they weren't thinking about it, just in case they hadn't gotten into the part of your video yet where you actually tell people to subscribe. Um, this is just one more place that it makes it easier for them to see that call to action, to remember to actually do it and click it. You'll be shocked over the course of a lot of videos, over the course of your video library, how many people are actually going to click on that link and subscribe to your channel. And all of this stuff adds up. You, know, you might think, just as a side note, I want to go ahead and say this too. You might think that, when people are subs or when people uh, uh, subscribe and you start seeing you know that number, you go and you look at your stats inside of TubeBuddy and you start seeing that number climb a little bit and you start thinking, man, I just added this to like five videos and I'm not seeing a lot of clicks, right? That's probably going to happen. But here's the thing: when you get you know 50 videos, 100 videos, 200 videos, you know you get a lot of videos or you get a lot of views on the videos that you have then you're going to see those numbers start climbing like crazy. So the idea behind this is getting all of this stuff in place now so that as your channel grows, as you get each single viewer that comes in and watches each one of your videos, that you make it easy for them to subscribe in any way possible. And that is one of the ways that, uh, that you can do it. The next thing that you want to make sure that you do, of course, and this one is not too buddy related, but this one you want to make sure that you are using um, because I know that I look at a lot of videos where people are not using the end screens at all because either one, they don't know how, two, they don't know that they're available or you know what's the, the whole reason behind them, um, or three, they just don't know how, how to put it in there. So you want to make sure that you are adding your subscribe icon to all of your end screens as well because YouTube has all of these features because they are effective, right? And again, one video two videos, you're not going to see, you know, a big difference, but over the course of your, of your library of videos, all of these little things add up and they make it a lot easier for people to subscribe to your channel. So you want to make sure that you're using that as well. You want to make sure that you are adding that to your end screens. If that's not something that you are already doing. So I'm going to pop in here real quick and just address some comments. I can grow exponentially this way for sure. Absolutely, it all adds up, Pilot Blogs. You know, each each place that you put your subscribe button, each, um, uh, each option that they have that makes it easier for them to either consume more of your content or to, to subscribe to your channel, over the course of your library, you know, all of this stuff can really, you know, it can really add up and it can make a, a really big difference. TV says, nice, Nick but I'm more of a playlist person. I don't want the viewer to just watch one video, but a playlist instead. Well, guess what? I, I Paul TV, I have some stuff coming up that you're going to love if that's the situation because we're, we're getting to the view side of that right here in a second. I just want to hop in the uh, comments here real quick and just, uh, you know, address some things. Say what is going up to you guys. T.O. Player Plays Games. Nick Nimmin, I found it's really hard to get 1,000 views on one video when you are starting out. Any tips? 
um, of course, the tips that you always fall back on, you know, I always fall back on this is learning how to get your content discovered, making your content. And this is, we're going to go into a full Q&A once I get through this stuff. But just to go ahead and address that really quick, TO player plays, um, you want to make sure that you're making content that people are actually looking for. You know, like when you're first starting out in order to get discovered, you have to be on the other side of searches. If you are not sharing your content um, yourself in places that are that are uh, causing views to come in or generating views, I should say, then you need to be on the other side of search terms. So the next thing that we are going to talk about on this list is more views, which if more people are watching more of your videos, then of course that leads to more watch time, which adds to your channel authority, which makes it easier to rank videos, which makes everything much better because the more that people are watching your content, maybe somebody's not subscribed yet, right? Maybe they are watching a few of your videos before they are before they actually make that call to subscribe. So you also, in addition to making it easy for them to, subs uh, to subscribe, you want to make it easy for them to watch more of your content, which is right up your alley here, um, iPal TV. <laughs> so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go back into TubeBuddy on that same exact page where the subscribe link was um, in the promo tools there, you're going to see the option for a most recent upload and a most popular upload. Um, you can use both of these because you know every option that you give people is fantastic. So you can use both of these. Um, personally, I like to use the, or focus on the most recent upload. Now, the reason that I like to focus on the most recent upload is because, you know, again, we're talking about video library. We're thinking long-term here, and we're talking about, you know, the video library. So when you use that most recent upload, you can use this in, in a few different places, which I'm going to talk about here in a few minutes. But when you are using that most recent upload link, what is happening is any videos that are older videos, or maybe you have content that isn't as evergreen as content that is going on now, or, or maybe you just have content that, you know, they need to stay updated on what's going on new, or they just want to see what you uploaded most recently. In those cases, using these links are going to help people be able to do that. So again, just like the subscribe link, we are going to move into the description area of your videos. And really this whole thing, right, goes into, um, optimizing your descriptions to get more subscribers, to get more views, um, you know, internal views into your channel, which YouTube absolutely loves when you're sending yourself, um, you know, when you're sending yourself a lot of internal traffic. So, of course, you know, you see already at the top there, you see where we had the subscribe link added to the description. And you can do a lot of this stuff also inside of your upload defaults. So make sure... Um, that if you don't want to add these links in there every single time, make sure that you, at the very least, you know, get a nice staple of things that you can add to your upload defaults. So the <clears throat> with the links that the most recent link you can see there at the top, the very top arrow, you have the watch the most recent video, right? And again, what this is doing is this is helping you generate more internal links into your uh, into your channel when they're watching your videos. Now, if you go down to the bottom arrows, you're going to see that there are playlists also that are directly related to this content. There are playlists, and it's not just one playlist. You know, it's three different playlists down here that give people the additional option when they scroll all the way down in the description, down there at the very bottom, they see, hey, I can click and watch more of their videos if it's something that they, if, you know, if they're into your content and they want to watch more. Play the mind. Yes, these are emojis, and you can actually um, you can actually put these in. TubeBuddy actually allows you. To, uh, they actually have these. You can use them in comments and everything, and you can use them in titles as well. Um, if if you don't want to do that, you can go to like Emojipedia. Um, they also have them to where you can uh, to where you can uh, download them. There, you can just copy and paste them right out of Emojipedia. I believe is the name of it. And guys, if you're watching this, if you are finding any value in this at all, make sure that you give this video a thumbs up. And if you know anywhere on Facebook, maybe your own Facebook page, Twitter, um, anywhere where you can share this video to get more people in here so we can help more people grow on YouTube, get more views, then make sure to go ahead and share this video right now as well. No problem, play the mind, my pleasure. 
But yeah, so at the bottom of this um, of the description here, basically we have a fully optimized description now because you have the subscribe button in there. Of course, you have your description information at the top. You have your subscribe um, option there for anybody that's scrolling through your description. Um, you have any additional things that you reference, anything that you're selling or trying to get traffic to, you also have that in there. And then, of course, you have down at the bottom where they can go in and they can consume more of your content. Devon Street, it's not that they're more effective, but in some cases they can help draw attention to things that you want them to you know, it can help, the emojis can help draw attention to things that you want to draw attention to. So for me, you know, of course I want people to subscribe. I want people to watch more content. And I have, you know, my personal projects like uh, tubertools.com slash members that I want to send people to as well. And because of that, you know, I, I use the emojis personally in order to just draw attention to those things when people are scrolling through the, um, through the descriptions. And I also use them on live streams too sometimes. Like, uh, you know, just that, that red dot really stands out. Even in emails, you know, when you're going through emails and the notifications come in that somebody's gone live, having that little red dot really helps it, uh, really helps it stand out there. So another thing that you can do, since we're on the topic of views now, another thing that you can do is to help generate more views. And you can actually go through right now right? Because here you're not adjusting descriptions or anything like that to where you might mess with your SEO. So I'm going to go ahead and say that too. Just as a quick disclaimer, on past videos, if you have videos that are doing well, probably not a good idea to touch them. But uh, with the thing that I'm getting ready to show you here, you can do this on any of your videos because it's comment related. So another thing that you can do here, and you can use this in order to you, I mean, you can put a subscribe link here or you can put playlist links here. But one thing that I recommend that I have found has been effective for me is adding a playlist to a pinned comment in my comment section. So if you have a channel, good morning, Mountain Moto. So if you have a channel that is getting views and people are going down and they're interactive. They're leaving comments on your stuff because you know they want to interact in your community. If you're currently pinning comments, or if you're currently not pinning comments, you should be. And two, when you pin those comments, some of those comments on some of your videos, preferably a lot of your videos, should be your comments feeding people deeper into your channel, deeper into more of your content. So one thing you can do is... You can use the TubeBuddy most recent link that we got before. You can add that as a pinned comment if you want. Um, you can also add a playlist like you see here in this example. And when you add that playlist, basically, again, it's something that's specifically related to the video that you have live um, on your channel. Basically, the video that the person's watching, you want to make that playlist that you have pinned to the top of your comments so when they scroll down, they see your recommendation to watch more videos. So in this example on mine, um, you know, I have watch this playlist if you're new to YouTube. It's YouTube Tips for Beginners, which basically, you know, that specifically targets any new person that is on YouTube so that they can go in and they can see an entire playlist of additional tips that I have for them. So, so... Uh, adding these to your pinned comments, definitely. Hey, Eileen, what is going on? Nice to see you in here. So definitely pinning your comments um, can definitely lead to an increase internal, uh, in internal traffic. Yeah, and definitely, like you can go back into old videos before you had the ability on YouTube to pin a comment. You can go back into old videos as well. You can go through your entire library, leave your own pinned comment on, uh, on all of your videos, your entire library, and you, you'll see, you know, as long as you're getting views on those videos, you'll see a, a bump in your, in your views and your watch time because of that. So the next thing that you want to do, of course, and this one, you know, a lot of us know already, you know, kind of an old, uh, you know, an old, I won't say trick, but, you know, an old tactic here is, you know, you want to make sure that you're adding playlists to your cards as well. And one good rule of thumb when you are using playlists in your cards is, if you don't know this already, basically when you have your audience retention, and I'm actually going to scribble this out here on a piece of paper real quick. So you have your audience retention, and you know when it first comes on, let's say it drops off a little bit, and your audience retention kind of goes like this. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, you can. So basically what you want to do, one thing that will help you is when you are going through your audience retention reports, and you have your absolute retention, 
and you see that people are watching your videos, but for whatever reason, there's a lot of people that are dropping off right around this area, right? It's really good practice, just a few seconds before that, you know, before that people in mass start dropping off. I'm gonna put a big X here. So a few seconds before people start dropping off, if you add a card there with a playlist, then you can catch them before they drop off because they're already losing interest in mass. This isn't just one person. This is, you know, a lot of people. So you can put a, a playlist card here to catch them before they drop off. And you can also help feed, uh, you know, more views into your content um, because of that as well by using the cards. And of course, just like the subscribe option, um, it's also good practice to add playlists to your end screen. If you are not using the end screens, again, this is, this is built in YouTube stuff. They make all of this for a reason and they release it. <laughs> nice drawing says Eileen. Thanks Eileen. I appreciate it. But basically you, you, uh, uh, when you use YouTube's features, you know, they have all this stuff for a reason. So, you know, the, the subscribe option that we went over before, you know, it helps you get more subscribers and the end screen, uh, the playlist on the end screen definitely helps you get uh, more views as well. So that is how you optimize your channel to help drive more views and subscribers. So from here, we can actually get into the question and answer segment of this because that seems to be the funnest part for the most fun, I'm not sure if funnest is a word or not, but that seems to be the most fun part for, for everybody. And real quick, I also wanna say, if you are not already subscribed to TubeBuddy and you wanna learn expert information on how to grow your channel, make sure that you hit the subscribe button right now. And if you don't have TubeBuddy installed, make sure that you go to tubebuddy.com slash install and you go ahead and you install it now because it is going to make, TubeBuddy is going to be a game changer um, on your channel, an absolute game changer. So let's see here. So let's go ahead and get into the question and answer portion of this party. <laughs> and let's see what kind of questions you guys have. And Andrew, real quick, could you shoot me a link to that doc um, on this side because I can't get into it um, right now, if I just click on that form, if you could send that to me on Skype real quick, just so I can click on it and um, and get into it that way, because right now it's not giving me it's not giving me access. Like I can see it, but it's not giving me the access to actually see the the, the stuff. There we go. Okay, so now we are going to get into into the fun here. There we go. Okay, first, and again, guys, I wanna say thank you really quick before we get into this q and I I wanna say thank you for participating in the TubeBuddy live stream. I wanna say thank you for being a part of the YouTube community because, you know, it's awesome, you know, for for us, you know, being on this side of things, it's awesome to, to you know, have other creators, other similar-minded people that, you know, are making content, that are trying to grow their channels, that are trying to get their message out there, that are trying to, you know, accomplish whatever it is that they're trying to accomplish on YouTube. But it's it's the creative minds. You know what I mean? It's really awesome to be a part of this community for me. And I'm I'm really glad that you guys are a part of this community as well. Okay, so the first question here is from Advocat. And Advocat asks, Harry Britt, Mr. Harry Britt, what is going on? Nice to see you in here, my friend. Live again, Nick. Thank you for your advice yesterday. No problem at all, my friend. Um, Advocat asks, can you use copyrighted music in live streams slash videos if you do not monetize them? Okay, the answer to that is no, you absolutely cannot use copyrighted music. You have to have the license to the music that you are using. And this goes as far as if you are, let's say that, you know, because of the mobile feature, let's say that you're at the mall right? And you're out walking around and you're thinking to yourself, you know, oh, hey, this is a great place to do a live stream. So you're at the mall and you 
go ahead and you throw your camera up and you're like, hey, I'm gonna live stream here right now. People are gonna love this. It's gonna be crazy because it's awesome. But you don't pay attention and you don't realize that there are people, or not people, but there are you know restaurants behind you that are you know playing music or whatever so you're sitting here and you're live streaming and you're like yeah you know and i'm in this great place and everything is awesome it's fantastic we're having a great time wish you were here and then your stream gets killed and you get a strike on your on your channel because you know uh, uh applebee's or you know wherever it is that you happen to be uh you know they're playing music in the background and you get a strike because of it so yeah even live you have to be really careful um, and not use copyright music for for any reason. Okay, next up on the list. Let's see here. Okay, this is from Kim Buening. Kim um, asks, how do I find the best hashtag by using TubeBuddy? I found how they get ranked, but now how do I find the best ones? Is there a search function? Um, you know, Kim, inside of TubeBuddy, I'm not sure if there's a hashtag search function, um, but there are services or websites that you can use for hashtags. So what I would do is I would just go to Google in that case, and I would just type for trending hashtags, and there are websites that, that you can actually check um, trending hashtags. So I would, I would look for those and see if you, can, if you can find them that way. Okay... Yeah, and that's another thing um, that I don't have on this list um, just because I ran out of time putting it together. But, P but Pete Bennett asks um, if he can use the featured video function when using cards to stop drop-off, as you uh, just explained. Um, you can, but here's the thing with the featured video is that goes across your entire video library, right? So if you have it set to come in at two minutes and you have some videos that are three minutes, you have some videos that are 10 minutes, you have some videos, you know, of all these different durations, then that's gonna still come in, you know, around the same time. Unless, of course, um, you know, you have it set, you know, to be optimized by YouTube, but it's not gonna be based on your audience retention. So definitely use cards for that and take the time. It's a long, manual, grueling process to go through your video library and, and put your cards at these drop-off points. But the work that you put in for doing that definitely pays off. So make that a habit. What I usually do is I'll let a video stay live for about two weeks, and then I'll go back and uh, and and I'll make all the changes that way. Like once I got caught up in my library, is I'll let it stay live for you know two weeks, and then I'll go through and I'll I'll start you know seeing where people are dropping off, and I'll start adding cards that way. And now that's a part of my routine, so to speak, um, which makes keeping up on it. Um, a lot easier. Okay, let's see here. Holman Horizon asks, is there a link where you can show how to create an end screen? Yeah, um, you have it as I end screen, it's E-N-D screen, and you do that inside of your, uh, your video manager. So basically you go into your actual uh, video manager on your channel, or you know, per video, and you'll see a little option up there at the top or at the bottom uh, that says end screens. You want to click on that. And then YouTube has a bunch of built-in templates to where they'll place everything for you. You just have to tell YouTube what it is that you want in those particular places. And you always want to make sure that you use your, um, your actual subscribe icon uh, in there and a playlist uh, or a video of playlists. And yeah, you can also get end screen backgrounds at tubertools.com. Um, just as an option for you if you want something stylish. Um, another thing that you can do is, let's say your video is playing and uh, it's at the end of the video and you're gonna have your end screen pop up or you're gonna have those templates um, pop up that are built into YouTube where you already have all this stuff put in or you're input, importing it from another video, which is another option that you can do. Um, another thing you can do just to make it simple is you can actually blur your video, just let it hang and just blur your video and then just put the put the um, in-screen options on top of that. But if you want something that looks really cool, then head over to tubertools.com. You can also, if you're a premium member of TubeBuddy, um, there's also, I think, there's like 100 maybe or, or like 70 or something like that, but there's a lot of um, in-screens that you can actually get if you're a premium member of TubeBuddy. Dale Roberts, what is going on? Nice to see you in here, buddy. Nixie, no, I do not do live channel uh, uh, channel reviews on this stream. 
Okay, the next question that we are going to get into, and this is the teacher, and the question is, I have 460 videos, it's a lot of videos, 220,000, or I'm sorry, 22,000 subscribers, and 400,000 monthly views, is that okay? Sure. You know, it all depends, like, you know, we all have our own personal success metrics, right? We all have our, our own things. What's going on, TGs? We, we all, TJs? We, we all have soft worker. Nice to see you in here. We all have our own personal metrics as far as what we consider to be success. For some of us, you know, it is if we're able to, you know, go, be full time on YouTube. For others, it's just how many views can I get. For other people, it's how many people I can help. For um, for some of us, it is specifically um, about hey, you know, I just want to I just want to upload a thousand videos and see what happens if I upload a thousand videos. So if that is okay or not. Yes, it's okay, but again, it all goes back to your to your personal goals. So, if out of 460 videos, if the 20 if your goals are subscribers and views, then yeah, you're doing okay. But if your goals are getting traffic to a website, for example, then you, your subscriber count and your monthly view count isn't going to be as important. So it all you know it all comes down to your to, to your personal goals and, and what you want to accomplish. Okay. Next question is I have fitness, E I H A B fitness says, Nick, if I uploaded a video that gets decent views, but not loads with only one or two ranked terms for search, should I redo the tags to improve? Will YouTube rank the video after the change, given it's a few weeks old, as people say, the rank window is 48 hours only. You can always, if you choose, you can always redo the meta in your videos. Here's the thing. You can redo your titles, your descriptions, your tags, everything. But what's going to happen is if you go and you add tags, then yeah, you can rank for additional things, but you might have ranked for those things already anyway, based on your title and your description. So you can definitely go in and modify your tags at any time and don't remove anything that you're already ranking for, of course. Um, but yeah, you can go ahead and, and, and do that. Um, I've actually had videos rank in the past. Um, clients of mine ha have as well, where basically on the you know, the initial, like you're saying, that initial 48 hours, a week, two weeks, whatever, um, you know, like the, the video just doesn't seem to be ranking. Um, so we'll go in, we'll just do a, you know, a few slight modifications to the title, the description and the tags, and it can, you know, it can make a huge difference on the video. Now on the flip side of that, if you are already ranking for a few things and you go in and you make those modifications, not just the tags, the tags usually, um, from my, from my experiences, haven't, haven't made a big difference on the, on the overall video, but, you can also go in and by doing these changes, you can make a big difference, but you can also go in and you can screw up your positioning um, as well, which is why I made that disclaimer earlier as far as if you are going to go into old videos and you're going to change the descriptions up and things like that, just keep in mind that you, you, know, you might see some shuffling around uh, with your videos when you do that. Next question on our list is from Kazor says, hey, Nick, please check out my channel and give me some advice. By the way, can you make a live stream for me? Just showing me what to do. Cannot, not right now. This live stream is for everybody and it's for you. And I cannot check out your channel right now just because that is not the type of stream that we are on right now. On my channel, I do that sort of thing in some of my live streams, not all of them. So make sure to head over to my channel and subscribe there. And if you are just coming in here and you are not subscribed to TubeBuddy, make sure you do that. If you don't have TubeBuddy installed, it's a game changer for your YouTube channel. So make sure that you go ahead and go to TubeBuddy.com slash install and you install the TubeBuddy browser plugin right now. You can start with a free account. You can upgrade later or you can go in, go hard, commit and actually get a paid plan so that you can get more features that can help you actually, you know, make big changes on your channel. And if you are not familiar with me, my name is Nick Nim and I help YouTubers grow their channels, make videos and all types of other YouTube related stuff. So make sure that you head over to youtube.com slash Nick Nimmin and subscribe to me as well if you want to get more information like this. Okay. The next one is from Tech News Malayalam asking how videos are added in YouTube trending. Basically, they go into YouTube trending based on uh, based on the activity that, they're, that they are getting. Let's see here. Okay. 
Sate71, this is a good question. Sate71 asks, how can I find out which of my current tags are actually effective and which are mostly useless? In TubeBuddy, when you have tube, the TubeBuddy browser installed, um, you can actually see the little green numbers that will pop up next to your tags. That will let you know which tags are ranking and which tags um, are not. Now, keep in mind, this is something that's very important to keep in mind. Just because a tag is not ranking does not mean that it's not helping to connect you to another video on another channel that might help drive you some suggested traffic. So before you go in and you just start deleting tags that don't have little green numbers next to them, make sure that you're not getting uh, suggested traffic from similar videos. Justo asks, hey Nick, do you have any tips for vlogging channels? Let me refresh this really quick. Okay, my tips for vlogging channels is basically try to do something different, as crazy as that sounds. Try to do something different because everybody's trying to be Casey Neistat. Everybody's trying to be Peter uh, McKinnon, I think his name is. Like, try to do something different. Those guys stood out because they were doing different things. Create your own style. Create your own brand, right? Go really hard on your branding because that's how people are going to recognize you. So go really hard on your branding. Create your own style. Create your own presentation style of how you're actually, you know, uh, structuring the videos that you put together. And really, if you can, f if you can add something inspirational, something motivational, something educational to your vlogs as well, that's also going to take you, um, a little bit further. So those, those are my, my heavy recommendations, but with your vlog, I would do a heavy focus on your actual branding and by your branding, I mean your message, right? Like what is it you're trying to share with people? Um, your visual, authority as far as you know what somebody sees when they come to your channel page and is everything congruent on your channel page your thumbnails your header and all of that um your actual style you know your editing style the style and look of your videos the style and look of your channel art and your thumbnails and all of that like tie all of that together to make an awesome experience for the people that watch your videos and something that they can actually connect to Okay, let me refresh this uh, question list here. And it looks like we are not getting any more questions coming in that way, so I'm just gonna start pulling them right out of the stream if that's okay with you guys. Give this video a thumbs up if it's okay if I start pulling these questions out of the stream so that I can talk to you guys directly instead of going through, um, instead of going through the list here. So give me a thumbs up if that's something that you're feeling. Something that you're feeling. Okay. So I'm going to start going through the list here. Okay, Waller Dog asks, how much of a game changer is it when we reach 1,000 subs? Reaching 1,000 subscribers is not a game changer. There's, there's a myth on YouTube that says that once you reach 100, it's easier. Once you reach 1,000, it's easier. And, and you know all these crazy things start happening. It's not really the case. I mean, of course, you might get some additional features and stuff like that. But um, the actual growth game changer isn't necessarily there just because you got a thousand subscribers. The, the, the game changer is actually what got you those 1000 subscribers in the first place, right? I mean, of course you also have your elements of by the time you reach a thousand subscribers, in most cases, you're starting to build a video library, right? And the reason that people think that, that, you know, these things happen just because you get a thousand subscribers, it's not necessarily that it's because you got a thousand subscribers. It's because you have, more videos out there that are pulling people into your content. And with all of those additional people that you're pulling into your content, that's more people that are sharing your content, that's more watch time that you're getting and views that you're getting on your channel faster, which are all positive metrics. So it's not necessarily that number that you cross the line of. It's not saying, hey, I got a thousand subscribers. All of a sudden, everything's gonna be different now. It's not the case. It's, it's the same work that you put in to get to that 1,000 subscribers that propels you further once you cross that subscri that 1,000 subscriber mark and helps you get to the next milestone that much faster. Social Blue Book says, thanks, Nick. Great stuff as always. I'm glad you're enjoying it. Hey, I, uh, I hope you got a chance to check out uh, WeChat, by the way. Any advice for music channel, says the Eternal Dreamers. My advice for music channels, because music channels are the are the biggest channels, the exception of PewDiePie. They're some of the biggest some of the biggest channels on YouTube. My advice for music channels is put time and effort into your visuals, 
with your music channel because musicians are focused on music in a lot of cases, right? You, creative minds, of course, but you know, you're, you're focused on making awesome music and that's great. Hook up with somebody that knows how to do video and blend their video skills with your music skills and try to make music videos. Even if they are, you know, not the best music videos, but they're pretty good. Try to make awesome music videos that complement your music so that you create the full experience for people. I mean, on YouTube, YouTube is a visual thing, right? So you want to make sure that you're making awesome stuff. Like you can have great results sitting in your living room and playing, you know, playing a guitar. You definitely can. However, if you are making music and you actually put together a production of, of sorts, you know, you and a friend go out with a camera and you take the time to actually, you know, edit a video together and you actually make a music video the best that you possibly can. In a lot of cases, that's going to do more for you than just sitting on your couch playing a guitar. Okay, let's see here. Next on the list here is, I did reach WeChat, but have not heard back. Okay, okay. Been using it since the end of last year. TubeBuddy, love TubeBuddy. See, we got a TubeBuddy fan in here. DLRP fan says, love TubeBuddy. Been using it since the end of last year. That is awesome. Thumbs up to you. Fist bump and a high five for already using TubeBuddy for a year. So you know, and you can vouch also, that TubeBuddy is a game changer. So if you have not already installed TubeBuddy, make sure that you go to TubeBuddy.com slash install and go ahead and get it in there right now because it's going to make a big difference um, on your YouTube channel. And also, we've got Social Blue Book in the house as well. And if you are not on Social Blue Book yet, I'm going to go ahead and just and just give this shout out as well. If you are not on Social Blue Book yet, get on Social Blue Book. And the reason for that is because brands can find you through Social Blue Book and give you money to make videos for them, right? So they can give you money to sponsor a video on your channel. I've gotten work through Social Blue Book fantastic service, super easy, super fast, seamless process. So if you're not on uh, Social Blue Book yet, make sure that you are on Social Blue Book. And they're also integrated with TubeBuddy and you'll see your um, actual Social Blue Book value inside of TubeBuddy um, as well. Yeah, and Andrew is also saying right here, Social Blue Book helped him negotiate a price for his collaboration and it was super helpful. Fantastic. So yeah, we're getting co-signing on all types of stuff in here. Co-signing on TubeBuddy, co-signing on Social Blue Book. Fantastic stuff. Okay, let's see here. iPaul TV says TubeBuddy's free, but I suggest you upgrade when you are upgrading as well. Absolutely. Okay, guys, let's let's get some questions rolling in here. And uh, I'm going to go up here in the chat here just so we don't have the uh, dead air, so to speak. Okay, so we have, I'm not sure how to pronounce your name, P-R-A-S-H-A-N-T-H-H, -H -H, says, hey, Nick, what should be the ideal length of video for more views? There's not a secret sauce here. You know, of course, you know, longer videos, you give people a chance to give you more watch time. Um, longer videos can, as long as people are actually watching the videos for the, for, you know, a decent percentage of the video, um, they can help you rank and stuff like that. But an ideal video is, length of video is as long as it needs to be, uh, where it, it doesn't start dragging out and it's not a forced long video, right? Like depending on the type of videos that you're making, if you are sharing uh, like any type of educational, motivational, helpful, inspiring type of video, make it as long as it needs to be. If, it, if the information you're sharing needs to take you to a 15 minute video or 20 minute video or an hour, then make a video that long. But if the type of video that you're sharing, you can comfortably wrap it up in three minutes, five minutes, six minutes, eight minutes, 10 minutes, then, then go that way. There isn't a, a, an exact time that you should make all of your videos in order to guarantee views. Because, you know, there's still, there's a lot of variables involved. You know, you have your video length, of course, but with your video length, a long video, if nobody's watching it, doesn't, you know, it's not gonna help you out. If, if, if you have a 10 minute video or a 20 minute video and people are watching it for a minute, then you would have done just as good if you made a two minute video, right? The, the bonus of making the longer videos is if you have a five minute video and people watch 100% of it, the most that you're gonna get on that video is five minutes. But if you have a 10 minute video and people watch 60% of it, then, you know, then you're gonna get more, um, more watch time out of that video. So that's, that's the whole idea with the longer content. 
Okay, let's see what we got here. Okay, so the next question on the list is, I'm going to kiss a girl. That's funny. How many girls are in here? Yeah, there's a few. Seeing a few female names in here. Danielle's in here. Marlo's in here. Thanks so much. I will research. What's the deal with breaking 10,000 total channel views? Does it change the way your channel ranks after passing it? The, the thing with uh, breaking the 10,000 total channel views is basically what they're doing is they're, they're creating a barrier to entry, right? Basically, they're saying that in order to monetize your channel, because of the whole ad problem, right? They're saying in order to monetize your channel, then you need to have 10,000 total channel views. What this does is it cuts down on people making a bunch of different channels just for the sake of running ads and making, you know, hate channels and things like that that don't really grab traction, but they have ads on them, right? So that's what they're trying to avoid is they're creating that barrier to entry to where essentially you got to prove yourself a little bit before, um, before they open up the monetization to you. Vapex Karma says, thanks, Nick, for your unique tips helping me grow my channel almost 9,000 now. That is awesome. You know, uh, Vapex, I haven't seen you on my channel yet, so make sure, because I see your comment in here, but I haven't seen you on any of my live streams or comments, so make sure that you head over to my channel, youtube.com slash Nick Nimmin, and subscribe there um, if you are not already. And that goes for anybody in this stream. Right now, we've got 104 people in here. If you are not familiar with me, my name is Nick Nimmin. I help YouTubers grow their channels, make videos, and all types of other YouTube-related stuff. So if that is something that you are interested in, which I'm guessing it is because you're here on TubeBuddy, right, then make sure to head over to youtube.com slash Nick Nimmin, N-I-C-K-N-I-M-M-I-N, and subscribe to my channel. There's also a link to me down in the description below. And if you are not subscribed to TubeBuddy, hit the subscribe button on them as well and make sure that you install it because it's a browser plugin that you can start with for free that will be a game changer for your YouTube channel. And, you know, there's tons of comments in here saying how helpful TubeBuddy is. So definitely make sure that you install it if you haven't yet. Um, let's see here. Everybody study SEO. Yes, absolutely. Says Smokey SRH. SEO is extremely important. Stands for search engine optimization as WWE CWC mentioned. And basically search engine optimization helps you rank your videos in not only YouTube, right? Here's the thing. People are stuck on on just ranking in YouTube. You don't want to just rank in YouTube. You want to you want to rank your videos in YouTube and um, in Google and the other search engines as well. Because basically, instead of just having your videos show up and search for YouTube, if they show up and search in all of the search engines, then that's more traffic that comes into your channel faster, and that helps you grow. And that helps you grow overall. Hey, Nick, what are the top three most must-use tools with TubeBuddy? Um, for me, it's the A-B testing your thumbnails. Crucial. Especially, um, and, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break these down here. Um, I, you know, I'm going to say the number one, at least. Well, no, we'll, we'll do two. Um, the number one for me personally, because I already knew how to tag my videos, but the, the number one for me personally was being able to A-B test my thumbnails. And the reason for that is... When, when we all make our thumbnails, right, because that's, that's our single, like that's the entry point in most cases to our videos, right? There's a reason that when you hop on YouTube, right, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open this up and I'm going to go to my homepage. There's a reason that, here I am right here at the top, there's a reason that when you go to YouTube and you scroll there's a reason that the thumbnail is the biggest thing on the page, right? It's because of visual browsers. It's be, it's people that go and they are going through and they are visual. They're they're looking at it visually and they're not necessarily reading titles, right? So A/B testing your thumbnails. What that does is that gives you the ability to compare. And I'm going to go ahead and rip a piece of paper out here so that I can illustrate this. And I've done this in past streams as well, but I, I really want to hammer this home because this is crucial. It's extremely important to the long-term growth of your channel. Okay, so with A-B testing your thumbnails, here is the basic concept. You have thumbnail A, right? There we go. You have thumbnail A and you have thumbnail B, right? Thumbnail A is the thumbnail that you think Man, you know what? This thumbnail is awesome. People are going to click on this like crazy, right? Thumbnail B is your experimentation thumbnail, right? To where you're like, you know what? I think they're going to click on this like crazy, but I'm going to go ahead and make maybe a color variation 
or maybe I'm going to add my face, or maybe I'm going to make my face bigger. Maybe I'm going to change the actual text on the thumbnail. Whatever your experimentation metric is here, that's what that's what B is for, right? For A and B testing. So what you do is you load these into TubeBuddy, and it's going to automatically switch these over the period of time that you that you uh, set it to do. So what this does is it takes what you think you know, and it gives you actual real data to support if that information is actually, or, or your thoughts are actually valid or not. Because, you know, it, it happens to all of us, right? Like we all think, hey, you know, I know what people would click on because we base it on our, on our personal usage. But when you actually A-B test your thumbnails, you get real data on what everybody, you know, that is coming into your channel. You get real data on what is actually working and what is not working. So let's say you were right, right? Let's say that you, what you thought would work better does work better. So then you know that you can ditch this one, right? But you do another A-B test and then you find out that whatever changes you made to this one, wow, people are clicking on this one two times more then they are clicking on this one. So even though I thought this one was better, I need to ditch this one and I'm just gonna roll with this one, right? So basically with A-B testing your thumbnails, this dials in what works and what doesn't work for that initial click because you have to, and I think I think my friend Owen, who is also on this channel, coined the phrase of, of, of winning the click, right? You have to win the click when people are scrolling. When your videos come up in search, you have to win the click. If you don't win the click, people aren't going to click in. They're not going to watch your videos. You have to win the click. And having awesome thumbnails, they don't even have to look great per se. They just have to be effective, right? So if you A-B test your thumbnails, you might take something that looks amazing and compare it against something that doesn't. But the one that doesn't, in some cases, will actually outperform the one that looks amazing. Right. But of course, you know, you want to add branding to them and things like that. You definitely want to include that. But that takes me to the second part of A-B testing. If you are working on your channel branding, this is crucial. If, if you are just starting out on YouTube um, or you're redoing your branding across your whole channel, hey, I'm, I'm redoing my branding. So I want to test what is going to work. I want to test the color schemes that seem to work. I'm going to test the actual style and see what people click on most. You can do that before you actually commit to making a, a, a full change across your channel. So basically, you can say, okay, I want my branding to look kind of like this, but I'm going to do a variation, just a color change here, and see what gets the most activity. And then you, you basically base all of, you run a handful of different tests, and then whichever one wins, then those are the color schemes you go with, those are the fonts you go with. And, and that can also be a game changer um, as far as your channel is concerned. Because here's the thing. If you get your thumbnail game down, game changer, right? Getting your, getting your thumbnail game down is just as important as installing TubeBuddy. And TubeBuddy will actually help you get your thumbnail game down by using that A-B feature. So, or the A-B testing. So if you get your thumbnail game down, then you're increasing those clicks into your channel, Right. As long as once those people clicking into your channel, once those viewers come in, as long as you are actually holding them on your video, as long as you're actually, you know, as long as they're watching for a decent period of time on your video, then not only are you feeding them in through the thumbnail, but you're getting more watch time and that additional watch time is going to help you show up everywhere. So total game changer. The second feature that is, is also extremely important just noticed the Thug Stormtrooper on the mic says Kate's Adventures. Yeah, I've got the Thug, Thug Stormtrooper here, and I have a legit, the Stormtrooper helmet back here, this is a legit um, prop replica. It's um, ATA, I think, is the company that builds it. But uh, I actually had to import this, because I'm in Thailand, so I had to import this from the States. Um, and, and there's like a builder. Basically, they buy the, they have to buy the stuff, and then they send it somewhere, and they have a builder. And then the builder, you know, paints everything and puts it all together, and then they ship it over here. So, uh, so but yeah, that's an actual, like, legit Stormtrooper helmet back there. Working on a suit, actually, but the suit's not legit. It's, it's like foam and all of that stuff. So it's, it's like total cosplay style, but it actually looks pretty cool. My brother and I are building them. Sith Nick. <laughs> But yeah, um, basically the first one, the first feature, just to answer the question, the because uh, I rambled on there a bit because I really wanted to hammer home the importance of A/B testing your thumbnails to to dial everything in. But um, the second feature, of course, is is tagging 
because sometimes in, in general keyword research, because, you know, uh, sometimes the same thing applies. We'll think of tags, but when it suggests tags, we think, oh, you know what? I didn't even think about that one. And then, you know, you can go ahead and add those as well. Waller Dog, wow, Thailand just goes to show location is not important for working on the internet. Absolutely not. I've been here for a decade. And I've, I've you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, yeah, location doesn't matter. What's it, what's important is actually, is actually, you know, uh, learning to work on the internet. And then from there, that gives you the ability to go anywhere that you want as long as you're connected to a internet connection. Okay, let's see here. Nick, how long should I take it? How long should it take me to edit my videos? I don't have an editing background. Really, as you as you learn to edit, um, as you learn to make YouTube videos on a regular basis, your your process, and this is for Drift 221. Um, and I'm not seeing it Drift 221, but as a side note too, I would definitely um, make sure that you customize your profile uh, picture as well. Because what happens is your profile picture currently. Um, you know what? It might be customized, but it, it, it looks like it's not. So I would definitely customize it a little bit more, maybe put a face on there or something else, um, just so it stands out a little bit more, but anyway, or just so it looks, you know, more personal, but anyway, um, as far as the time that it takes you to edit your videos and just making videos in general, um, when you first start out on YouTube, it takes a lot longer than it usually does once you get everything dialed in, once you get your process in, once you get used to, to actually, you know, using the software um, in order to edit your videos. So um, what you want to do is not necessarily focus on the time that it takes you. You want to focus on what can I do in my workflow to speed things up. And one thing that you can do is you can actually template when you are editing your videos. So if you have an intro that you always use, you have lower thirds you always use, you have an end screen that you always use, go ahead and put those in a template file and then always start a new video with that template file. And then that way, all of that stuff is in there and it, and it makes everything a, a gazillion times faster because you don't have to go and find the file. Oh, where did I put this on my computer? And then you go and find it. You have to import it, you know, and all that stuff. If you, if you get a template together and you get like a nice folder structure together that helps you kind of hold everything together where you know everything, where everything is, it makes it a lot faster. But the speed at which you edit Depends on how picky you are. If you're doing presentation style videos to where you're actually talking to the camera, it depends on how much you screw up, you know, because if you're screwing up a lot, then of course, you know, it's going to take you longer to edit your videos because you're going to have a lot more material to sort through. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different elements involved. You know, how much graphics are you using? Are you actually having to hunt down B-roll footage? Are you having to hunt down stock photos? Are you making additional graphics for your videos? You know, there's a lot of different elements involved as far as the um, as far as when it comes to, um, the actual time that's going to take you to, um, edit your videos. So I'm going to open this Google docs again, real quick here and just see if anything happened to pop in. Oh, and it has. Okay. So I'm going to, I'm going to go from here real quick and see, let's see here. We've gotten through that one. I think we were on number nine, maybe. Live streaming, yeah. Waller Dog says live streaming saves on editing. That is absolutely true. Um, I actually personally I use that on my channel as well, to where I um, I live stream every Saturday, and I go on. I do uh, subscriber Q and As. Um, I do um, channel reviews and things like that on my live stream. So um, live streaming has been a game changer for me as far as adding that weekly upload has really helped my um, has really helped my channel. Yeah, Kill Creation says he used to do all of his editing on his phone um, until he got his iMac. Yeah, so even that, you know, you, you have that to, to consider as well um, as far as the time that you're actually putting in. And real quick, guys, if you have not yet, um, make sure to give this video a thumbs up just so we can send some positive metrics out to YouTube. Um, if you haven't yet given it a thumbs up, if you find any of the stuff that I'm talking about helpful, make sure to hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed to TubeBuddy, make sure you do it because they are rolling up on 100,000 subscribers and they need you to get there. And also, my name is Nick Nimmin. I help YouTubers grow their channels, make videos, and all types of other YouTube-related stuff. YouTube.com slash Nick Nimmin. You can find a link to me down in the description as well. Um, if you want to learn how to grow your channel, you know, on a per video basis instead of, um, you know, once a month on a live stream from me specifically. Okay, so um, let's see here. Okay, yeah, that question doesn't really apply. 
I mean, I guess it does. Okay, um, let's see here. The Dude 12 asks, Nick, you have been with TubeBuddy for a while. How did you meet them? Who is Phil? Are you the owner? I am not the owner. Um, I have been with them for a while. Basically, we connected initially um, through uh, Tuber Tools. Actually, I believe was our first uh, connection. We basically got in contact that way to, you know, kind of, you know, discuss some things there. And, uh, you know, we've, we've, you know, grown our relationship from there. Awesome guys, Andrew and Phil both. Spinman says, Nick, you talked about cards. I use in cards. Is that the same thing? No. Um, from what I know, YouTube doesn't allow you to add cards or annotation. A little bit confused here and still fresh. No problem. You know, there's a lot to learn on YouTube, so don't worry about being fresh. Uh, all questions are good questions. Um, the end card is the end screen, right? So basically two different things here. You have the end cards that were basically, you know, part of the annotations. But since those are gone now, you have the end screens, right? So you want to make sure that you're using those. Those are the things that go at the very end of your video. You get uh, 20 seconds. You know, you get that last 20 seconds of your video that you can use it on. That's the end screen. Uh, card is an additional thing. It's that little info. It's a little iCard. Let me pull up my screen here so I can point in the right place. Um, it's a little card that pops up right up here in the corner when you're watching a video that will recommend you to go to a website. It'll recommend you to go into a playlist. It'll recommend you to go to another channel and things like that. But it's basically that little that little circle icon that pops up with a little eye and it has text that comes out. That is a card. So that's that's the difference between the two. Okay. Next on the list. Any advice for music channels? Yeah, we got that one already. Next on the list, Inner Geek Designs asked, does engagement increase ranking on videos? I've noticed that when I first upload, TubeBuddy has a few keywords ranking, and a week or so later, after, after I get more engagement, there will be more. It's not necessarily that you are getting more engagement that's causing your videos to rank. It's that people are actually coming in and they're watching your videos for uh, a, a decent amount of time. That's, that's what it is. It's, it's not necessarily the engagement. Um, engagement you are definitely, you know, triggering other metrics. The engagement on my channel is is very good. Um, you know, my community is extremely active. You know, I'm I'm active in my comments. I'm you know always you know interacting with people. You know, there's there's uh, you know viewers from my community in here right now. H R H Tiffany, um, Danielle Branch, um, the Harry Britt, um, Gord Eisman was in here a little bit ago. Um, Kill Creations. Um, you know what I mean? Like, like you know, uh, the, the people in, involved on my channel keep my channel extremely active, which is awesome. Awesome community over there. Um, but my videos don't rank per se just because my community is active. They, they rank because people watch my videos for extended periods of time. Yeah, Andrew too. <laughs> Andrew as well. But you know what, Andrew? I don't see you in the comments a lot. So, uh, so, uh, you know, for that, yeah. And AliX also, you know, he's in here also. So, uh, so yeah, that's why I didn't mention you there, uh, Andrew, but yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Intrepid Don. Yeah. Also, you know what I mean? It's, 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 it's an awesome, uh, awesome community we have, uh, going over there. I will make you a mod actually. Thank you. Uh, just Sonoma asks, what is the best way to get sponsorship, collaboration, product placement, and other business inquiries? Should I approach them or wait until they approach me? I'm at 300 subscribers at the moment. Okay, here's the thing. Um, on YouTube, you don't per se have to have a lot of subscribers in order to get sponsorships or do product placements or collaborate with other people. I'm going to break this down to a few different things. Um, first, we're going to start with the sponsorship slash product placement and other business inquiries. Uh, we're actually going to save business inquiries. So we're going to break this down to sponsorship and product placement. If you have 300 subscribers, depending on how fast your channel is growing, how much momentum you're picking up, how, much, how many videos it took you to get to 300 subscribers, you can hustle yourself to try to get people to sponsor your channel or particular videos. And what I mean by that is, depending on the type of content you make, if there's a particular industry or business that is a perfect fit, and I'm talking perfect fit for your content, reach out to them. Via, you can pick up the phone and call them. You can email them. 
You know what I mean? You can try to get at them on social media, but basically you want to approach them in that particular situation because they're not going to approach you in most cases with 300 subscribers. So because you don't have the amount of subscribers to where you can get into fame bit and stuff like that, then you want to, I am Mr. Steal Yo Girl. <laughs> Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, yeah, I'm not sure where that one was, but I'll, I, yeah, I'll go into that one. But, um, uh, but as far as the sponsorships and the product placement, you know, get out there, knock on doors, call people, send emails, um, in order to get that, ha in order to get that to happen. And instead of focusing on how many subscribers you have, because the people that are going to sponsor you, they don't care about how many subscribers you have per se. They care about how many eyeballs you can get their stuff in front of. That's what matters. So you want to you want to tell them the views you're getting. You want to talk about how you're growing. You want to talk about the direction that your channel is headed and not necessarily focus on the fact that you have 300 subscribers because we think, you know, as YouTubers, because we know how hard it is to get, you know, that first 300 subscribers, we think, you know, hey, 300 subscribers, you know, it's a good start. But for other people, they might see that and think, well, they only have 300 subscribers, so I'm not... Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not interested, right? But, but focus on your views in that situation. For collaborations, people will collaborate with you at any level, you know, and it also depends on, you know, who you know on YouTube and things like that. Like, if you know another YouTuber personally, most likely they'll collaborate with you regardless of their channel size. Um, but you can always reach out to collaborate with people with similar content. But here's the thing. When it comes to collaboration, visual authority is huge, especially if you have a smaller channel. What I mean by visual authority is this. When somebody lands on your channel page, you want everything to look awesome. You want your branding to look fantastic. You want your overall pr presentation of your channel and your video content to be amazing, right? So maybe you don't have the growth yet. Maybe you don't have the actual subscriber count yet. But what you do have is that visual presentation to where it looks like you have a pro channel. Extremely important. And when you have that then it makes, more, it makes people more likely to subscribe to you because they're impressed by what they see. They're impressed by how your videos look. They're impressed by how your videos sound. They're impressed by how your channel art looks, how your thumbnails look, and things like that because it, it shows that most likely that you're in it for an extended period of time. Most likely you're not going to just bail on your channel because you know, you've polished everything up and you've gotten everything to be um, as good as it can possibly be, and people, people respond to that. Okay, so next up on the list here, Discovering Natural. What is going on? Nice to see you in here. Yeah, Aliex says that he's waiting to go after sponsorships. Um, he needs to be bigger, maybe 10,000, unless it's a perfect fit. Yeah, um, because you, um, let's see here, if if you have crossed, I'm not sure, Aliex, if you've crossed 5,000 yet, but if you cross 5,000, you can go into um, FameBit. But, you know, keep in mind with FameBit, you are getting in front of people that are looking to sponsor people. That's good. Um, or to sponsor videos. But you can also go on uh, Social Blue Book because they, you know, you can get sponsorships through them as long as, you know, you have the right metrics in place, as long as your engagement is there. And that's another thing, too, um, as far as sponsorships and paid promotional things is it's really important that you focus a lot of time and energy on growing your community and getting your community engage to get it to where people are coming in and they're commenting on your videos like crazy and things like that because that engagement shows that people are more likely to take your recommendations they're more likely to click through links that you recommend and things like that and that's the stuff that that companies and brands and websites and whatever will actually pay for is to get in front of those engaged people to get you know to get that traffic okay let's see here the next question is from beanie draws the question is, everyone is suggesting daily playlists to act as more content. If your channel is niche, do you have any suggestions on how to make playlist titles and content not seem repetitive in being able to have more than one video per playlist? Yeah, if, you're, if, you're, if your channel is niche, which most channels should be niche in some way, but if your channel is niche, um, when you are making your playlist and putting playlists together, you definitely want to put more than one video in them. So you want to make that part of your content strategy, your overall strategy for your content. You want to make your content so that you can fill these playlists up, right? So you want to say, okay, over the next six months, I'm going to create this many playlists. And inside of this many playlists, I want to have this many videos per playlist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this specific group of videos to go into these specific 
playlists and all of these specific videos are going to serve these specific purposes as, as well as these particular playlists are also going to serve these particular purposes. These videos and playlists are going to be to drive views to my channel. These videos and playlists are going to be to directly speak to the to uh, my target audience to actually get them to subscribe to my channel. These particular videos and playlists are made solely for the purpose of driving people to affiliate offers or, you know, these are my money videos. They're driving people to affiliate offers. They're driving people to your website. They're driving people to, you know, whatever it is that you are trying to get them um, involved with. Hope that answered your question. And guys, real quick, also as a side note, you know, uh, 91 people in here, um, you've probably seen it going across the ticker on the bottom of the screen, but uh, tubertools.com slash members, go and check that out. We have video graphics over there. We just opened the members area last week. Um, and, you know, people, I'm getting amazing feedback on it. People are absolutely loving it, but you can get video graphics. You can get... Uh, uh, some, you know, sound effects, which more sound effects are going to be going in there. But in addition to that, I'm also adding monthly training videos to where I do, I, I go, I do deep dives, um, into different aspects of YouTube to help you grow your channel, get more views and things like that. So definitely head over to tubertools.com slash members and watch the video there so that you can kind of know, get an idea for what's inside and how, um, it can help you. So definitely go over there and check that out if you get the chance. Okay. Let's see here. Next question on the list is how many videos should there be in a playlist to grow your view count without having people drop off of the playlist? Um, basically what you want to do, there's not a specific amount of videos, but you want to put as many videos into as many playlists as you possibly can because what happens is with all of the different videos you are creating, again, you're creating more opportunity for people to consume more of your content. So the more videos that you add to a playlist, depending on your niche, because you know it depends on how competitive your niche is and things like that. Your driver, Mike, nice to see you in here. So what you wanna do is you want to um, add, continually add videos to different playlists. And the thing with playlists is one, you are creating that new URL, but more importantly, playlists can rank in search. So you also wanna make sure that you're using your descriptions in your playlists as well. So that, you know, so that it can actually help you rank in search and that you are using good titles for your playlists um, also. And that can help drive um, traffic into your channel. And again, depends on the niche that you are operating in um, as far as how effective ranking a playlist can be. Like in my niche, it's a lot more difficult um, than it would be in, you know, in a music niche as an example. Niche. Okay. And also, just as, a, as another side tip, and I didn't add this one on my list either as far as getting views, because again, I ran out of time, but um, another thing that you can do to increase the internal views on your channel is make sure, since we're talking about playlists, make sure to add series playlists, um, because when you add a series playlist, YouTube specifically tells us in their documentation, in their Creator Academy, they specifically tell us that um, when you add a series, or when you add a, a video to a playlist series, they are more likely to recommend those videos alongside of the video that someone is watching. So um, basically you have a better chance of your additional videos in that series coming up as an auto-suggested video or, or an auto-play video that's coming up next and um, showing up um, you know, in, in your recommended sidebar. Yes, Katie's Adventures series playlist um, affects what video is suggested next, absolutely. And Just Sonoma says that I need to finish the, the Creator Academy. Here's the thing, Just Sonoma and everybody watching this right now, um, there's a lot that goes on on YouTube. There's a lot of stuff to learn on YouTube. And because they offer, it's free. You don't have to pay anything to go through the YouTube Creator Academy. It's, it's free, 100% free. They give you a ton of information that can help you get real results here on YouTube. So it's really important that if you're taking YouTube seriously, it's really important that you go into and, and, and complete the YouTube Creator Academy. And anytime they do updates, that you go in and you go along with the updates and you consume the updates as well. As an example, they just had an update come out to where they share um, how, basically they share with family-friendly content um, how that you can increase the your ability to show ads on your channel and to how you can make sure that long term that your channel is going to be safe and that you're not going to have to worry about any ad problems again. 
Okay, gotta go, folks. Thanks for the inspiration, Nick. Thanks for the chat, everyone else. Kate's Adventures, thanks for stopping by. Nice to see you. Danielle Branch says, Nick Nimmin is my creator academy. Yeah, the thing is with that, though, you have to you have to watch me, like, you know, video at a time with the creator academy. You can just go in and, and hammer it all out. Okay. Okay, um, the... Uh, I'm not sure how to say your name, but they say, hey, Nick, what is the, this video is unlisted, be considerate and think twice before sharing. Um, what that means is that the video is not listed publicly on the channel and they, if you're going to share it somewhere, um, it's not a private video, but if you're going to share it somewhere, just be considerate of the fact that if somebody sent you a link, they may not want other people to watch that video. So they just want you to keep that in mind. That's all it is. Okay, let's see here. Snake Delta says, Nick, the YouTube Creator Academy has some great useful tips for newcomers, but not a lot for more experienced YouTuber. Yeah, like if you if you go through the Creator Academy, then that's basically is going to give you the tools to help you figure out how to figure things out for yourself. So basically when you go through the Creator Academy, it lets you know, you know, what is, um, you know, what's going on on your, it, it basically helps you learn how to how to do everything on YouTube so that you can, okay, you got to it already. Um, so that you can, you know, learn how to figure out what works and what doesn't work yourself. They basically help you equip yourself um, with the information to be able to do that. Okay, let me go back into the question list here, see what else we got. And then we'll be wrapping this up here shortly. So if you have any questions, make sure that you go ahead and drop them in right now. So <laughs> thanks, Andrew. Make sure that you go ahead and drop them in right now so that, um, so that we can go ahead and see if we can get them addressed. Intrepid Dawn says, I've nearly increased my subs 400% in the last six weeks using Nick's, Nick's tips and TubeBuddy and creating better content, of course. Under 100 to nearly 400 subs as of today. Awesome work, Intrepid Dawn. Nice to see. For the YouTube Creator app, yes, absolutely, HRH Tiffany, definitely use the YouTube Creator app, the Creator Studio app, absolutely. And then you can you can get like con uh, comments on the fly and things like that. Okay, Life Begins at 20 says, I've been using TubeBuddy to get better tags for searches, but is it worth having 77 out of 100 ranking on obscure tags or finding something that's 55 to 65 out of 100 on a more competitive searched one. My current tags are often ranking highly, but I don't know if that's the best I can get out of the video or getting related videos off the back of any of it. Any advice? Okay. This is where learning how to research and rank your, your videos comes in really handy because of course you want to go for longer or, or multiple word keyword phrases, right? So that you increase your chances of ranking. But as you learn how to optimize your videos, as your channel authority grows, as you are, you know, getting everything dialed in, so to speak, you definitely want to try to go for more difficult terms from time to time. Not necessarily one word phrase, or not necessarily one word, but more difficult to rank for words. Um, one thing that I like to call this is basically throwing a Hail Mary. I recommend that from time to time, just so you can kind of gauge things and so that you can gauge your understanding of ranking videos and stuff like that. From time to time, throw a Hail Mary, go for something difficult, or at least that's at least considerably more difficult than what you currently try to rank for. And what happens when you do that is that gives you a good gauge on your understanding of how to rank. And it also gives you a good gauge of kind of where you sit in comparison to other channels that you're trying to rank against. Okay. NBRS Commander says you are giving us very valuable information. Thank you. My pleasure. Thanks for hanging out in the stream. I appreciate it. Yeah, I do. Andrew, I do have Instagram. Nick Nimmin uh, is, you can find me everywhere on the internet at uh, slash Nick Nimmin, N-I-C-K-N-I-M-M-I-N. YouTube, Twitter, um, Instagram. I don't use uh, Snapchat. I have it, but I don't use it. But yeah, you can find me all over the internet by my, by my name. Okay, um, Wildfire Bird asks, how important is it to have a website outside of things like Facebook, Twitter, etc.? In my opinion, and this is, this is opinion here, um, in my opinion, it's extremely important to have a website. And the reason for that is because you can do things like uh, redirection. 
You can do things like set up an email list. You can set up a blog to where you can share your videos on your blog. In addition to, you know, sharing them on Facebook, Twitter, and things like that, you can also try to rank your blog in search and you have your videos embedded in your blog. And then by doing that, you're creating one more avenue to generate traffic to your YouTube videos and your blog, right? So when you have a blog, you're creating an additional asset for yourself so that, you know, over the course of your growth, as you are, you know, as you are continuing to grow your channel, your brand, or however it is that you're structuring your stuff, you know, having that additional asset um, that you fully control because you have the domain name, you're in charge of the hosting account, you're in charge of what goes on it. Um, you know, having that, that property that you control can be extremely valuable, even for simple things like, um, you know, how we were talking at the beginning of this live stream. If you've been on here for a while, we we're talking about grabbing the auto subscribe link from TubeBuddy, right? One thing you can also do is you can grab that link and you can put a redirect on your site. So you can tell people, um, Hey, uh, go to my website slash YouTube. And that can be your reference. Instead of saying, go to youtube.com slash whatever your name is, you can say, go to my website slash YouTube or slash YT to make it easy. And when they go there, then it, you can make it to where it can automatically redirect them right to your YouTube channel. So having your own, your own website, your own property on the internet, um, there's a lot of things that you can do to it to where you can actually add a lot of, a lot of value and a lot of ease to the people that are into what it is that you're doing. Sky High Beats, no worries, man. Nice to see you in here. I hope you are well. Let's see here. Just Sonoma says, I tried to link to your Instagram, but it won't let me. Yeah, no worries. It's all good. Yeah, Instagram.com slash Nick Nimmin. I share some YouTube stuff on there. I also show some just behind the scenes of, you know, being a full-time YouTuber, you know, gear stuff and things like that. Um, I also show some, you know, travel stuff. Um, as well, because, you know, I live in Thailand. So, you know, I share some stuff on there about some of the things that I see here in Thailand. I also show stuff like, you know, like pictures of, you know, when I'm scripting out stuff or, you know, things like that, just little things like that, that you might find uh, entertaining. Miss Yabby Addison, what is going on? Nice to see you. <laughs> okay. Next question on the list. And then, guys, it is now, um, we've been on here for give or take about um, an hour and a half. So here in just a few minutes, we're going to go ahead and start wrapping this up. Andrew says, how many ties do you want in Thailand, Nick? I don't understand the question. How many ties do you want in Thailand? Own. Oh, how many ties? Because the locals are called ties also. So I, I kind of... Yeah, I took that for a second and I was like, oh gosh, that's a, what kind of question is that? But you mean actual ties? Um, zero. Yeah, absolutely zero. I'm a t-shirt. Sometimes I'm a collared shirt kind of guy, but uh, here, you know, the weather's good. You know, I wear flip-flops most of the time uh, or sandals, you know, one of the two. And most of the time I'm in shorts as well. Awesome lifestyle that I, uh, that I live over here and I'm very grateful and appreciated uh, and, and appreciate. Appreciative. Saudi crop, Nick, nice. We've got a, 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 spy, a, a Thai speaker in here. That guy, solid. Nice. Travis Kraft lives in the Philippines. Nice. So you understand that, that expat lifestyle. Let's see here. My Rich Tone says, I'm updating templates and end screens with TubeBuddy and laughing because it's so easy to use. Incredibly user-friendly. And Nick, you're a dude. Any tips on fitness channel would be a super bonus. Um... Tips on a, on a fitness channel would really be to uh, just blow out the value on your channel. So basically share everything that you know on your channel, update it as much as you possibly can, and try to make things, like if you can create a style or try to make things look really good as well, um, that's also something really cool that a lot of fitness channels don't do. So, you know, trying to pro the channel up a little bit is something that I that I definitely recommend as well. Just to just to create your own style, you know what I mean. So so people don't only just get familiar with the information that you share, but they get familiar with you as a brand, and they get familiar with you by you know how you actually construct your videos, how they look, you know how you present everything in the videos. So it basically creates your entire brand um, around your channel instead of just sharing the information. Try to do something cool with it. 
because a lot of fitness channels don't try to do something cool with it. They just share the advice, which is also, I mean, that's cool because people are there for the advice, but James Jimmy Riviera, nice to see you in here, my friend. Um, and James is actually a member of Tuber Tools. Just to go ahead and say that, tubertools.com slash members. Um, what I mean by pro it up is make everything look professional. By pro, I mean professional. So, you know, basically have a, um, get a look, make everything look professional. You know, like shooting with um, no style, so to speak. It just makes everything look really amateur and bland, which is cool because if the information that you're sharing is good, then it's okay, you can get away with it. But what I'm saying is level everything up by creating an actual style with your content. Maybe you put a treatment on your video. Maybe you just have everything look fantastic. You use different, you know, depth of field. Basically, what I would do if I had a fitness channel is I would look into, is I would look into, you know, more cinematic style ways of shooting your content. It doesn't have to be cinematic, but I would I would apply some of those concepts to the way that you shoot your videos in order to really make your stuff stand out. Okay, let's see here. I saw a lighting question, um, and and Andrew actually just mentioned it too. Invest in lighting, a great setup, and figure out what you want to say. Yeah, somebody also mentioned a, a lighting setup. And here's the thing. You can get really far on very cheap lighting. As an example, and I'm just going to grab this here. For my videos, and this is going to blow me out. I think I did this in the last stream too. But for my videos, and I'm going to pull this up here so that I can make sure that, that you guys can see it. This right here, I'm going to turn it this way. This is just a can light, right? It's got a switch on it here where I can turn it on and off, right? And I have this a t-shirt that's kind of bootlegged around it. And I use this to light the wet, the stream, but I also use this for my videos. I have this one as my, as my key light. This is the main light that hits my face. And I have another one that I have up on a shelf. That's the exact same style of light. And it does not have the diffusion on it, but I basically bounce the light off of the wall just to get the fill in on the other side of my face. And then everything else is done in my camera settings. Of course, I've got the whole blue thing going back here. But um, but with the lights, it's extremely, extremely easy to do. And Andrew, yes, normally that is very unsafe. But these particular bulbs, they're, they're extremely cool running um, bulbs. It's a Philips bulb. And they are not hot at all. Like I can reach in there right now and, and grab that with my hand and take it out. And no problem at all. It wouldn't hurt me or anything like that. Yeah, definitely do not. Let's go ahead and say do not try that at home, and uh, you definitely do not want to use a halogen light or any type of hot lights if you are, are doing something like that with the t-shirt. I was just showing that as an example of what I do, um, but you know, there's other ways that you can diffuse light with things that are not, um, that are not as uh, likely to catch on fire. I'll just go ahead and say it. You know, I'll go ahead and call it what it is. Um, is Google Keyword Planner a good source for keywords? Absolutely. Go ahead and answer that one. Just Sonoma says that I like living on the wild side. Yeah, I like the risk of making videos thinking that that my light could burst into flames at any moment. That's how I roll. <laughs> yeah, LEDs are great for that too, you know, so they, uh, so they don't get hot. Yeah, and, and uh, uh, Discovering Natural says that uh, she switched to daylight LED bulbs and it makes a huge difference in her hair and beauty videos. Yeah, absolutely. Like, um, that's something that's really important is rolling, depending, of course, on the type of videos that you make. If you're making presentation style videos, if you go with a daylight balanced bulb, huge as far as your skin tones are concerned, as far as making things look natural. Of course, you can white balance your camera and things like that. But going with a, a daylight balanced bulb, they're basically trying to mimic the sun, which is the best light that you can get. Right, so a daylight balance bulb definitely can help dial things in a little bit. I too like to live dangerously. Okay, because content is always going to kill it, not just the thumbnail. I'm not sure what that is in response to, but yeah, the thumbnails are definitely important. Content is also definitely important. Okay, I use daylight bulbs for two buddy videos. Yeah, see. Another co-signer there for the daylight bulbs. Okay, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap this puppy up. So first, I want to thank you guys, especially 
I want to thank you. If you have been here and you've been a part of this whole stream, I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being a part of this stream. Um, if you have just come in, thank you for popping in. This is going to definitely be available on the replay. So definitely make sure that you check it out on the replay if there's anything that you missed at the beginning. Because the beginning of this, of course, there's always good information that comes out in the Q&A. But of course, in the beginning of this, um, there, there's a lot of very valuable information for optimizing your channel in order to generate more subscribers and more views on your, on your channel. Oh, you're always on the other. Uh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm, I'm going to have to, you know what? I didn't even know you had another one. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to, uh, to check that out, Andrew. Yeah. Send me a link to that in email if, if you wouldn't mind. Just so I can, just so I can, just so I can check that one out. Just so I can, you know, see you in there too. But yeah, guys, thank you so much. And again, my name is Nick Nimmin. I help YouTubers grow their channels, make videos, and all types of other YouTube-related stuff. So if you want to see more from me for that kind of stuff, you know, learning to grow your channel and all that, there's going to be a link to me um, in the description area of this video. You can also go to YouTube.com/slash. Nick Nimmin and find me there. Um, I also have, I'm the owner of Tuber Tools, not TubeBuddy, Tuber Tools, um, where you can get video graphics and some sound effects and more importantly, most importantly, monthly training videos from me to help you grow your YouTube channel. You can get that at YouTube, or I'm sorry, at uh, TuberTools.com slash members. And you can also go to TuberTools.com, tons of awesome, um, you know, graphics there for your YouTube channel as well. So guys, thanks again so much for being a part of this. And if you, again, if you're not subscribed to TubeBuddy, make sure that you hit the subscribe button right now, because of course, you know, they have creators on here like me, Owen Video, Dusty comes on here, Roberto Blake, they've had Daryl Eves on here. Um, yeah, Dusty Porter, um, Brian G. Johnson comes in here, Owen Hemsath or Owen Video, you know, I'm not sure if I mentioned him already. If I did, sorry for mentioning him twice. But Owen, you know, is also an awesome dude. So, you know, a lot of really valuable content being shared on this channel. So make sure that if you have not subscribed to TubeBuddy yet, that you go ahead and do that and click the bell notification icon so you can be notified when any of us um, go live here on TubeBuddy to help you, you know, learn additional things to grow your YouTube channel. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate you being here and I will see you next time.